Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are discussing Ellen DeGeneres's literally being canceled. Like her show has been canceled. She's quitting TV. I mean, she's quitting her show. It's been on for like, it'll be 19 seasons when she makes last year her, I'm sorry, next year her last year. And not just that, because she's been talking like a lot about this. Like once she started to talk about it, she kind of can't stop and she's digging herself into such a fucking hole. I've done videos before about how Ellen that she is a psychopath, but I've simply read the hair psychopathy checklist and then pointed out some of her behaviors. And speaking of getting canceled, that was one thing people came through for. You're so mean. Hmm, who turned out to be right? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> Me, again. So we're gonna go through some of what she's saying, see how this holds up in terms of her own bizarre personality. And more than that, we're gonna talk about what you can do if you are facing a toxic workplace environment. How do you deal with a psycho boss, a backhanded coworker? I mean, are there tactics? Can you beat them? I've been through this like IRL myself. I've read a lot of books on this because I was trying to diagnose my own situation. I'll tell you what the conventional wisdom says. I'll tell you some wisdom that I don't agree with. We're going to get into all of it. And tomorrow we are going to be doing a video on John Mulaney dating Olivia Munn and the ins and outs, the pros and cons of dating the nerd and the the downside, the huge downside <clears throat> that can be actually very traumatic, that you might not see coming. We're going to get into that. But before we do, just want to remind you guys, we added an extra week to the Shalligator getaway to Tulum, Mexico with influencer travel company Trend45. There's a few spots left. It's selling out really fast. Uh, the first week was going to be, I mean, it is June 27th to July 2nd. That sold out in 48 hours. So I decided to add another week starting on June 11th. Come join me. It's going to be so fun. We're all going to be in, like on a WhatsApp group together. We're going to coordinate what we're packing. There's going to be like a ton of excursions. We've got boats and golf and a million photographers photographers come on this trip. That's what it is. You come, you take amazing pictures and you hang out with me. Or if you don't want to take pictures, you don't have to. You can just enjoy a rad vacay with yours truly. Or you can just ignore me the whole time. It's totally fine. So click the link in the bio to check that out. Also, I want to tell you guys about a cozy collaboration I did with a really adorable small business that I discovered during the pandemic. It is a company called James Lauren Beauty. And they reached out to me because they're a mom daughter duo. And during the pandemic, they decided to just like start quilting to like pass the time and bond and they make these amazing quilts. We came up with one that is so beautiful. I mean, all of those are beautiful, but it's gray and white. You can have it custom monogrammed. I put XO on mine. So if you want to copy me, go for it. It's a beautiful design. It's heavy, like a weighted blanket. It's almost 12 pounds, but it's fluffy like a duvet, which so you don't feel like you're going to die under there, but you also get like the warmth and the coziness. It's snugglier than my last three boyfriends. Five five boyfriends. So click the link in the bio to shop and check them out. They're a fantastic little company. And you know, I love to support a small business whenever we can. So let's talk Ellen, this motherfucker. So as we know, last year, she got like canceled, canceled, but it started coming out that her workplace was like extremely toxic, that basically she was a nightmare to work for, that she was vicious and hateful and toxic. And I've told you guys, one of my friends did work for, I have like first hand, first connection knowledge to this. So my friend Kelly was an intern there and they did a rotation. Like if you're an intern, you do a rotation at like NBC, like, um, Telemundo. And I think like, uh, some other, like the Jay Leno show, whatever. And my friend was told like day one, it's like, you know, the days you're on Ellen's show, ugh, just try to get through it. She's like, and my friend's like, an ex mormon she's just like a little ball of sunshine, you know? And she's like, no, I love Ellen. They're like, okay. And she's like, I have never worked for someone. Mm. She's like, I made the mistake of smiling at her one time. I was like backstage with the clipboard. She's about to go on. I was just like, like that. And like, oh my God. Just like, um, she's like the look that she gave me. I will never forget it. I'll never forget it because it's like, she wanted me dead. No one has ever looked at me before or since like that. It was honestly frightening. Because like a 22 year old intern smiled at you. So many, many, many stories started to come out. And people thought she was maybe gonna quit the show, but she didn't, she came back and she gave this like monologue. We broke it down in a video, like 
line by line the absolute fuckery of this apology and explanation that she did and how it was basically distancing herself from all of her bad behavior and taking zero responsibility because you know her whole slogan was be kind bitch my slogan is not be kind my slogan is choose evil <laughs> evil is fun i'll tell you how to get away with it like these are better slogans if you are evil lean into it and i remember that's what howard stern told her at the time he's like just embrace it be like yeah i'm a fucking bitch i'm a monster don't cross me blah, blah, blah. Like rebrand and lean in. Don't try to like keep going down this path, but she did. So she recently announced that she's quitting. She's her next season is going to be the last. And I'm just going to read you some of the stuff she's been saying because it's all, it's also ridiculous and self aggrandizing. So she said, she insisted that like getting canceled last year had nothing to do with it, nothing to do with it. If it was why I was quitting, I would not have come back this year, she said. I really did think about not coming back because it was devastating. But how can I be an example of strength and perseverance and power? Are you? Who's, who views you that? Okay. <clears throat> of perseverance and power if I give up and run away. It really is one of the reasons I came back. I worked really hard on myself. Mm. She then cited something her therapist said to her allegedly which was how many people have endured this level of public humiliation twice in a lifetime? And I was like, twice? So when she came out as gay as, in like 1997 and she had that sitcom, which was not, it was not funny, man. They canceled the sitcom. Now, whether they canceled it because she was gay, I mean, because on the show, like she had like love interests, like men. So it's like, they would have had to be like, okay, well, we got to write chicks into this now. And that was like maybe too spicy for back then. But she... You know, so there's all this backlash. These two are not related. These two are not related. She might truly have been the victim of bullshit in 1997. She's not the victim now. And for her to play that card is not a coincidence. It's not accidental. It is extremely purposeful, right? We all know people, and this is such a tactic of assholes who want to get out of trouble, is they bring up something that is completely unrelated, but it's a pity grab because what do manipulative people want? What do sociopaths want? The number one thing a sociopath wants, pity. Not power, not revenge, pity. Because when you are pitied, you are extremely malleable, right? Like you, I always say, you ever call someone in a wheelchair an asshole? Probably not. That doesn't mean there aren't some who just happen to be sitting down, but you don't do it because you feel sorry for them, right? You just simply don't. So Ellen is like playing this card. And like we know people, it's like, you're, I can't believe you're yelling at me for like rear-ending your car. Don't you know I just had a miscarriage? It's like, none of, these two don't relate. These two don't relate. What are you doing? This is an appeal to sympathy. We've talked about fallacies and argumentation before. I should do another, I should do a video just on like, the. I think there's like 15 argumentational fallacies, like rhetorical fallacies. And it's good to know them because you can be like appeal to sympathy, straw man argument, bandwagon appeal. And you can just like, boop, 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 just like shred someone who's trying to pull this fuck shit. But she didn't stop. So she didn't just do this little monologue at the beginning. She like has been talking to a bunch of outlets and whatever. So on the Today Show, she refuted the idea that, oh, it's because ratings are way down because hello, celebrities don't want to come on there. People are like not buying your like be kind shtick and your stupid fucking converse. But she said, oh, no, 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 not the ratings. Everything in television is down. Really, during a pandemic, no one was watching TV? That's interesting. It's got nothing to do with why I'm leaving. If I was having fun, I would do this show with nobody watching. Would you? Or does a psychopath need an audience? Does a narcissist need an audience? That's crazy. So it's got nothing to do with that. Uh huh. She, again, tried to play a victim card. Beware of a bully who tries to be a victim. But we talk about this, how people how victims become bullies. And we use Taylor Swift as, as an example. Like she feels fundamentally wronged constantly by life, boyfriends, the music industry, music critics. She's like, poor little lamb. And so that gives her in her mind the right to lash out and hurt other people, right? And we see this with people we know. People who are wounded are selfish. When I was clinically depressed and I thought I was just like the victim of the world. What the fuck was I? I was awful. I was the worst friend. I was the worst girlfriend. I was the worst daughter. I was horrible. So Ellen's uh, going down that path. 
I have to say, if nobody else is saying it, do you know why maybe no one else is saying what you're about to say? It was really interesting because I'm a woman and it did feel very misogynistic getting canceled. Okay. I mean, I really don't understand it, she said. I still don't understand it. It was too orchestrated. It was too coordinated. Oh, so now we've got a conspiracy theory in the works? This actually wasn't orchestrated or coordinated at all. This is like the most organic flow of information. It was Dakota Johnson calling your bullshit. Shallon Lester calling your bullshit. People on Twitter being like, tell me one positive interaction you've ever had IRL with Ellen DeGeneres and no one came up with anything. None. It's like, do you, what council of like anti Ellen people are out? Is this what the Illuminati does? They're just like, hmm. Okay. So we've like disrupted the new world order in Africa. What's next? I know Ellen DeGeneres. Do you really think that's what people are doing? This kind of self aggrandizement, classic psychopathy, classic everyone's out to get me, 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 me. The whole world revolves around me. Narcissism, narcissism. It's misogynistic. I'm a woman. Look, dude, 97% of people, and this is a true statistic, 97% of people who get canceled or harassed or bullied online, like in the, that big cancel way, are women. Society hates women. They hate successful women. They hate mouthy women. They don't particularly like white women at this point, you know? So I don't think she's wrong on that. Like, but again, like you can be a woman but you can also be shitty. Like you can be a shitty woman just because your woman doesn't mean you're not shitty. Just because your ex doesn't mean you are unable of being shitty. Wheelchair, black, Asian, um, left-handed, ginger, grew up in a houseboat in Spain, whatever you want to put there, just because you're this doesn't mean you're immune to any criticism. So while she might be on the right track, like again, she's distancing herself. And when she came back this season with like, mm, like I'm... I love everybody. Be kind. Like, don't act like you're taking responsibility. It's so clear from everything you're saying, you're not. You're throwing everything out there to distance yourself from all this fuckery. She also talked to the Hollywood Reporter. Like, girl, cut it out. Cut it out. Just a simple, hey, you know what? It's time to end it. When you're a creative person, you constantly need to be challenged. And as great as this show is and as fun as it is, it's just not a challenge anymore. Is it not a challenge or is it an overwhelming, insurmountable, impossible challenge that you have to actually be a nice person while you're at work? And when she, like this misogynistic thing, it's like you are arguably one of the most powerful women in Hollywood. You are. So yeah, I'm not saying life is easy for you, but like it's easier for you than people who have no power who still manage to be nice. And I just want to say one thing about her assertion. Like, if I didn't want to come back, I just wouldn't have. That is actually not how contracts work. She was under contract to come back this season, and she was gonna. They had already sold ad space. Like, that's huge. From working in a magazine, I can tell you, like, you know, ad space runs the same way, whether it's a commercial or a strip in a magazine. It doesn't matter. You sell that, you're producing that fucking content. Come hell or high water, we don't care if you don't like it. So for her to be like, I just would have left. No. So again, she's positioning herself as this person who just has the power to just, I just would have left, which that's not true. But then she flips. She's like, I'm just a widow woman washed in the woods. Well, which is it? Which is it? Same with Taylor Swift. She would do that. It's like, you know, everyone's so mean to me and I did this album all by myself. It's like, well, what? Like these two concepts don't, they don't align. They don't align. And you know why they don't align? Because this kind of person is not operating under the umbrella of logic. They're not telling the truth. It's like when you hear a four-year-old tell a lie and it just goes like, man, it spins and it spins. You're like, what? The truth is very linear. The truth is linear. And so the fact that she won't shut up about this tells me that her truth is not linear because what does it come down to? I'm a narcissist and nobody likes me now. And I can't be as mean and deranged, unchecked as I want. So I don't want to do this anymore. Fuck this. If I can't just be a monster, I don't want to fucking do this. That is the truth. So what if you work for an Ellen DeGeneres? Well, you know what? I did. I worked for someone who is a, I mean, the most textbook psychopath I've ever encountered or studied. It was, I almost consider myself lucky that I got to stand in the, in the radius of someone so deeply awful. And I've stood in the radius of several deeply awful bosses. I worked in New York City. I worked in publishing. It's a cutthroat industry. I've worked in television, right? I've had my own television show. So like I said, I have been there. 
And when I was in the middle of this, I was trying everything I could to figure out how to fix the situation. I'm a, I'm a doer. I'm a fixer. I was watching what this was doing to my employees and it was like killing me because I can stand up for myself and I know my rights and I stand up for it. Like, and I got very mouthy, you know, it's like, you take your entire lunch break, your kids in the hospital, take the day off. Like, no, we're not all checking our emails on Fridays. Okay. Like I was, or weekends, I was really, really trying to galvanize people into standing up for themselves. And, you know, I was trying to pack build and I knew that that just simply was not some people's personality. And so I was trying to deal with a boss who, like I said, was an absolute psychopath. Still is. Um, I had priorly dealt with someone when I worked at the New York Daily News, the managing editor, Orla Healy, one of the worst people I've ever encountered. I hope she sees this. Feel free to forward it to her. Uh, yeah, one of the worst people I've ever encountered in my entire career. She called me retarded in a meeting. I'm sorry. She called me aggressively retarded. A, what does that even mean? She called me a slut in a meeting. And I went to HR and I said, uh, uh, she called me a slut in a meeting. And they're like, well, long story short. And I recorded this. I like have this on tape. She can basically say whatever she wants. I'm like, can she go? can she call me the N word? And they're like, well, you're not black. I said, well, I'm not retarded either. And I'm not a slut either. So I'm about as slutty as I am black. So where's the line here? Is this, she can call me something as long as it's true. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you something. HR does not give a shit about you. The sooner you realize this, the easier things are going to be. Well, maybe not easier, but you're not going to be laboring under the delusion that they're the cavalry riding in to save you. They're not. HR is like a traffic cone. They're there to be like, hey, don't do the oh, while you drove around and we tried. HR exists to save the company from lawsuits. That's it. They exist to like do payroll and all that bullshit, but it's lawsuits. So if you're not going to them with something litigious, sexual harassment, sexual discrimination, racial discrimination, something that is super documented. They're going to be like, mm, do you think, who do you think they're going to side with? The boss who they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, who is concretely valuable to this company or so they've decided, or you, a 24 year old, a 34 year old, you're nothing to them. Your company does not care if you live or die. And I mean that. Do you know how I know that? Because someone did die in my office. This amazing, this amazing person who worked uh, for my parent company and he, he died on a weekend. He had a seizure and he, and he passed away. The, on Monday, there was someone in his chair. They filled it. They don't give a fuck if you live or die. So if your grandmother's in the hospital, your kids have a soccer game, go. But I digress. I'm telling you this because going to HR is not the fix you think, and it isn't even much of a threat. In fact, it can do more harm than good. Really quickly, I want to reference an article. I found this on Psychology Today. <clears throat> seven types of toxic bosses. I'm not going to read it all because I'm just going to read you these seven types, okay? And see which one you might identify with. Number one, office royalty. This, this is kind of vague. It seems like maybe they're like the boss's son, and now you're in charge, and they want to be treated like a princess or whatever. Number two, the diva. Number three, the stealth bomber. Uh, they imagine slights against them and they exact retribution. This is a, a classic trait of sociopathy, right? So, and they try to pit people against each other. So the, the workaround there is to really be united with your, with your team and not let this little puppet master like move the pieces around the chessboard. There's a lot of metaphors, I'm sorry. Number four, the whiner. I don't know. Number five, the pleaser. Okay. Number six, the scandal monger. I guess, I don't know. Number seven, the outright bully. Now, this is where we're going to land, right? The outright bully. Because these other ones, it's like, they seem like annoying personalities for sure, but they're nothing compared to someone who is a bully, a psychopath, a narcissist, someone who just has you honed in on it. Their advice on how to deal with a bully boss is thus. 
If you feel like you're being bullied, immediately begin documenting what is happening between you and the bully, okay? Because many bullies have seldom been confronted about their behavior from childhood into adulthood, calling them on the behavior might lead to a resolution. Left unchecked, bullies typically don't stop on their own. They may move from target to target, but the bullying tends to continue. Immediately file, I'm sorry, if you feel that sexual harassment is even a small part of the of bullying from the onset, immediately file a complaint with your human resources department. Okay. Again, sexual harassment, that's litigatable, that's litigious. You can actually file a complaint, you can go public with that, you can file a lawsuit. That has some merit. A boss who is simply mean to you, who has, you got a target on your back, going to this person and venting how you feel. This is the worst advice ever. This is horrible advice. Do not do this. Do not do this. Why? What do bullies love? A weakling. A weakling. And if you go to them, you're going to be nervous. You might even cry. I would. I mean, if I had to sit down with my psycho boss, me, you're being so mean to me. He would literally laugh in my face. Do you know how I know that? Because I watched him do it to someone else. I watched him go, like, you're yeah, being so mean. He's like, <laughs> this manic, insane laugh. He loved it. It was like a vampire watching someone bleed. He's like, ah. When you go to a boss and acknowledge how well their tactics have worked, they're like, oh, I was gonna move on to Jones over there, maybe Kristen. I'm going to stick with you because, man, I'm going to poke you and you're going to jump every single fucking time. This feels amazing. The last thing you want to do is try to meet a bully heart to heart, heart to heart. And just I just want to talk about our feelings. You are appealing to emotions and feelings they simply do not have. And if they do, they've shut them off. They don't care. And they're certainly not going to activate them for your bitch ass. They're not going to do that. So all you're going to do is show your hand as a weakling, as a pray to someone like this who is an emotional predator and let them know exactly which tactics work the best. Do you remember in that meeting you told me our work wasn't good enough? Well, now they know. Well, thank you. Thank you for identifying exactly what to do to get under your skin the fastest. And again, HR doesn't give a fuck if people are mean to you. They don't. That's not a lawsuit. They're mean. Even if you have valid sexual harassment, racial discrimination, it's still very hard to prove. I mean, it is. And who's got the money? It takes money to chase money, right? You can hire a lawyer, you can bankrupt yourself. I'm not telling you to just like let everything slide, but going to them being like, is how you make me feel? Horrible, horrible idea. Don't do this. It's going to make things worse. I read a lot of books on how to deal with people like this when I was going through it because it was starting to corrode me as a person. I'm a very self-possessed. I view myself as a powerful person. I never view myself as a victim. I, it makes my skin crawl. And I was starting to feel just ground down into dust. I remember walking around Brooklyn just weeping. I would just weep. I would come home from work and I would just zombie walk around. I would listen to this Jason Aldean song called Fast. I don't know why, but it's just like, it's about losing a generational family farm it has nothing to do with anything. But I was like, oh, and I would just cry because I felt so helpless. And I'm like, I'm going to be broke forever working this job. I'm going to work for a psychopath forever. I didn't know what to do. And so I read books. And you know what they told me? Overwhelmingly, the thesis of everyone, I read three books on psycho bosses. You know what they all said? Look for a new job. Keep your head down. Be the gray man and look for a new job. I can't tell you how depressing that advice was at the time. It was, it was awful. I, I was like combing through. I'm like, no, 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 no. You have to tell me something to do. I was trying to find some sort of path to defeating this person. You cannot defeat a psychopath and you can't defeat a bully. You can, if you have a leg to stand on. If I was like a trust fund kid and I was like, I don't even fucking need this job. Bah, 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 bah. Like, yeah, I would have gone toe to toe with them all the time, but I would have gotten fired sooner rather than later because they had the power and that's how it works. I am not telling you this. You know, my advice is never, never roll over. I do evil week, but I want you to look at what you're after, peace or victory. 
I know you're like, victory, victory. I, I know, I know. And you have a righteous right to that. You have a good hill to die on. You have a leg to stand on. This person is awful. They are harassing you. Why should you have to leave this job that you worked hard for? Why shouldn't they be the one to leave? I know, baby girl. I know. I know. But that simply is not going to get you further. That is going to corrode you. It will make you feel so frustrated, so relentlessly defeated because they're the big dog in the yard. And then you'll eventually just get fired. You'll eventually just get fired. So you're going to spend an extra six months, six years trying to take down this person who very likely might, might just win, you know, because they've got the power. And you're going to end up at exactly the same place looking for a job, out of work looking for a job. And you could have done that six years, six months prior and saved yourself that heartbreak. Trying to change a toxic boss is like trying to change a fuckboy. Sometimes it's just not possible. And if it is, why is that where you want to put your effort? I know what you're saying. Because this is my career. I'm not just going to leave this job. I know I thought that too. I, I did. And I ended up getting laid off from that job. I believe I got fired because I was a little too much of a rabble rouser. You know, I was, I was mouthy and I wasn't going to take any shit anymore. And I look back and I'm like, God, I wish that had happened a year prior, two years prior, five years prior. I could have been a YouTuber so much sooner. I could have gotten started on this chapter of my life that really made me happy. And I think about this boss and how much I want to destroy him. And it's like, even if I had, because he did end up getting fired later. And it's like, hmm, okay. It really didn't add up to much for me. It wasn't as satisfying as I thought it was going to be. You know what's satisfying? Being someplace where I'm valued. For me, that's YouTube. For you, that might be a job where, oh my God, you're starring your own business. You work for someone who actually is like so impressed with your talents. You're moving up a corporate ladder. There's no glass ceiling. There's no harassment. Those jobs are out there. But we get this like weird Stockholm syndrome with a toxic boss. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to make this work. Why? Not that you don't have the righteous indignation. You're right. You're right. But you can be right or you can be happy. I want to go back to a phrase I said, the gray man. What does that mean? It's a military phrase. I learned it back in ROTC. It means blend in. If you're a POW, you're captured, whatever, you want to be the gray man, the guy that they just forget about, not the strongest one, the general, not the weakest one who they can just pry those secrets out of, the guy who's just vague with no face. That's how you survive. Even in like a school shooter situation, you don't want to be the one that anyone's looking at and targeting. You want to vanish and blend in. This was the advice in all of those books. And truly, like from my own experience, I should have been the gray man. Go in, do your work, keep your head down. Oh, you want me to rewrite that? Okay, that's fine. Not bitchy. Meh, 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 meh. No real sense of integrity. Just like, fine, that's fine. And use the energy I would have spent trying to destroy this person in the situation that either one wasn't going to happen or two if it did really wasn't going to be that satisfying for me. Had I used that energy to look for other jobs, to come home from work and work on my YouTube channel instead of wandering the streets crying like the Incredible Hulk, that would have been a win. That would have been a win. But you know what? I learned from that. I learned from that that, okay, this is not an effective use of my time. People make hate videos about me. Do I respond? No. It's not an effective use of my time. I don't need to. I don't care. I'm making money, right? If it don't get me laid and it don't get me paid, child, I don't do it. So as much righteousness as you have to destroy this toxic boss, I want you to look at energy as currency. Energy like money. You have a finite amount to spend every day. And when it's gone, it's gone. Or you're in debt. So what? how are you spending this currency? Are you hemorrhaging it towards this fuck face boss to like, I'm going to be right. I'm going to stick it to him. I'm going to show him. Okay. What's the return on investment there? What is it? And sometimes there is one. Sometimes you're like, no, 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 this is my company. And they're trying to push me out. Sometimes you have to go to work. For the most part, the ROI on that isn't great. The return on investment of like, I'm going to put this into my side business. I'm going to put this into just going for a run, clearing my head, being healthy working on my resume, getting things together, 
and just compartmentalizing this job and this idiot I work for so that it's encapsulated and it doesn't bother me as much until I can get out. And this, I know, this is not satisfying advice, but it is the right advice. Hunger hurts, but starving works, said Fiona Apple. Like, don't like to do it literally, but you know, in this context. So be the gray man. I mean, go to HR if you think you have like a leg to stand on. But again, a lot of times that might just put a target on your back because what HR is going to do is talk to the boss and they're going to be like, oh, really? Interesting. I'm not saying you should let discrimination slide, not at all, but get your ducks in a row before you go to HR <sighs> because it's going to be difficult. Or you could go literally every single day. Be like, hey, just want to knock on your door. I got called a cunt in a meeting. Just want to let you know, Ken. And let them know you're a mosquito. You're a mosquito buzzing in the ear. You fix this or I'm going to be back tomorrow. I'm going to be back later today. That could be a tactic. But I, I would like to see you move into a place that you are valued, that you don't have to do that. Life is so stressful. And we hemorrhage so much energy already on things we have to do. I just want you to analyze what truly is going to feed you the most, bring you peace. How are you defining peace? Is it the right way? And what's actually eroding you further? And do you have a hand in it? I want to know your thoughts on Ellen quitting. Are you starting to, have you, has the mask fallen for you? Like, is it, you're like, mm, I see you lunatic. And like I said, come back tomorrow. We're going to be doing a video on John Mulaney dating Olivia Munn and the surprising pros and cons of dating a nerd and how to land yourself a nerd of your own. I'll see you later, shall I get